All right, hit me. Hi, noble ones. Welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking, but of course, Metatron is just my YouTube name. My name is Raffaello Urbani. I'm a native Italian speaker. I was born and bred in Italy and pasta. And as I was checking out the internet today and I was on YouTube, I found this video titled Why do Italians sound Italian? So I'm like intrigued. Now, this is a video from the channel Improve Your Accent and which is a fantastic channel, excellent for learning English. And uh, let's see so the description says understand why Italian speakers have an Italian accent when speaking English with the help of oh my god <laughs> with the help of Matteo Renzi Monica Bellucci oh no not Renzi Renzi Matteo Renzi is like the worst possible example of an Italian trying to speak English like the, you, you can't get anyways yeah that's fine let's let's check the video out <laughs> If your native language is Italian, but you're speaking mm -hmm. English, you may have an Italian accent. I may. But what does this actually mean? Already, just to start, I'd like to point out that the song at the beginning is not in Italian. It's in Naples dialect, which is not Italian. Uh, but yeah, this is just a little nitpick. Almost all words in Italian end in a vowel sound, which means that Italian speakers are not used to pronouncing words ending in a consonant. For English words ending in a consonant, Italians may add a vowel to make it easier to pronounce. For example, man would become manna. Okay, so uh, the example is not, is not good though, uh, because no, uh, with it, if I had to put on a real Italian accent, or if I had to forget everything I've learned, from uh, living in England as a as a teenager, uh, which is where I got my accent, which of course is not a perfect accent. I understand that I still, I mean, I don't sound as Italian as uh, Renzi, which we will see in a moment. He sounds more, he has a thicker, a thicker, um, broader Italian accent. I, I, I think when I speak English, I have a, a slight Italian accent if I have to be, like there are some things that you can tell I'm Italian and other things perhaps you don't, you can't. But uh, so this already, if I had to bring back my full Italian accent, I wouldn't say manna at all. I would say, so uh, that's, that's the first thing. You need to make it stronger. Men. <laughs> Listen to how vowels are added in the following clips. Mm. I am a man and I, I decide to remain a man. You see, a man. So uh, particularly when it's at the end of the word, then it becomes extended. At the end of the sentence, it becomes extended even more. But in general, I'd like to say the first, the N needs to be stronger, men. And second, uh, if you really want to get the proper Italian accent when you speak English. And secondly, the A, uh, you will have noticed that yeah, na I say man, but that's because I learned English in England. And I noticed that that's how English people s say it. But if you look at English, how it was pronounced a long time ago, like for example, when the Queen was, was young, if you listen to her recordings, she used to say happy instead of happy. Uh, so she actually changed, it's very interesting. And even now we, in Italy, it is still taught this older pronunciation where the short A becomes E, and so it becomes men, men. That, that's how an Italian would naturally say it. We find the Italian flag. Italian flag, oh, they are not exactly oh. with the words, with the words. And with the words, yeah, that's very true. I mean, Benigni is a great showman, but his, his English, I mean, he really, really, he just speaks it exactly like when he's speaking Italian. He makes no effort whatsoever. Uh, and, and I mean, it's not, it's not a fault, it's just an accent, there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm just saying, yeah, it's, it's a good example of words, absolutely, yeah. The root sound in English is made with the tongue not touching the top of the mouth. I'd like to say that, that the second song was Italian. Volare is a very, it's, a, it's an old classic, like from my mum's times, but yeah. Mouth. R. R. In Italian, the tip of the tongue does touch the top of the mouth. Yes. It's sometimes called a rolling alveolar arm, trill. but linguists call it an alveolar tap, yes. trill. Alveolar trill. Italians may use their R sound when speaking English. That was actually very good. R. He, he did it perfectly. It sounded just like. I, yeah, rr, so that was very good. English. Because I want everybody to learn how to do it. Because I yeah. want everybody to learn how to do everybody. it. Everybody. We think that frozen food is bad. For we think that frozen food is bad. <laughs> we have a lot of room to improvement. 
Okay, so it's interesting because I think out of these three speakers, the third one is the most natural. That's how I would, now I would say, uh, room for improvement. Well, he said two improvement. I think it's four, but anyways, room for improvement. Um, but yeah, if I if I had to roll my R, I would say room for improvement. So definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very the second one frozen sounded a bit too much to be honest. I mean, maybe it's just that guy's way of speaking. But I would say that the majority of Italians wouldn't roll it that much when there is one single R. Maybe with double R's, absolutely, but not with single. Mm. <laughs> Italian has a difference between single and double consonants. Yep. Listen to the difference between these two Italian words. Mm. Fato. Fato. Uh, very true, yeah. Fato means fate slash destiny and fatto means done. And yeah, 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 they're very different. Notice how the T sound in the second word is longer. It's not longer. Uh, actually, that's incorrect because the T, and, and I mean no disrespect, the fact that I love the guy, he's great. I, I'm going to subscribe, in fact, I'm going to subscribe now. Boom, done. So um, I'm just saying it's not longer, that's incorrect, because the T, uh, or anyways, the grapheme that we use to represent a T, both in English and in Italian, even though they're slightly different in the way they are pronounced, it still tends to represent a plosive. Um, in this case, a voiceless plosive. De facto, it's just by its very nature of the sound, it cannot be prolong prolonged, it's impossible. If you try and prolong the T sound, uh, you either prolong the vowel afterwards and say T, which in this case I'm just prolong prolonging a uh sound not a t or i do so i repeat it but it's impossible to do like you can't prolong it so no we don't make it longer we make it stronger in fact the difference between fato single t and fatto if you really pay attention what we're doing and that's how we teach it to our children that's how we learn it in italy is that when we have two consonants it doesn't just happen with t's but it happens with any it happens with any double consonant when you have double consonants we have to pronounce them we make a small pause and then we strengthen the sound of the of the, of the consonant that has been doubled so play it pay attention fatto fatto Okay, so little pause and then stronger sound, fatto, as opposed to fado, not longer. Linguists call these double consonants geminates, geminates which comes yeah. from the Latin word for twin. Yes. In English, we have words written with two identical letters next mm -hmm. to each other, but they aren't usually pronounced as a longer sound. For example, we say happy and not happy. I like how we did it in the second one, happy. B. Yeah, um, okay, so this, again, I disagree, it's not a longer sound, but I do have to say that I have this problem. I still have it. Uh, in fact, um, when I have to say, if I have to say that, happy, happy, I'm very happy. Well, now that I'm paying attention, I can do it, but naturally I would say happy, happy. I would make it double, and that's because I am using my own pr native pronunciation, so I tend to do it. Perhaps I don't overdo it, but I do tend to do it, particularly when I'm not paying attention or I'm speaking very fast. Happy. When Italian speakers talk in English, they are likely to follow the Italian rules yeah. and pronounce any double letter as a longer sound. Not longer, really yeah. Be happy, be happy, but also for these difficult times. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I do say the double F. I say difficult uh, rather than difficult. Difficult. I do, I do tend to do that. I'm aware of it, but it's really difficult to get rid of this one for me. It's difficult, there you go, <laughs> to get rid of this one for me. But did you notice how he said, uh, very happy? Did you see that the, the natural A sound in this case, it's a E, not a A uh, for, for Italians. And that's because we follow the, the older pronunciation, or that's the way they teach us at school, which, I mean, still native speakers use. Like, for example, in Australia, in South Africa, I want to say in any sort of colonial English. With American English, it's it's kind of a different one, and it also depends on, on where you're from. Uh, it kind of becomes a small diphthong, if you will, but um, I'm not going to go into that for now. But yeah, let's continue. This is our dream. This is our dinner. And also our instead of our. Now I would say this is our dinner. This is our dinner. But yeah, dinner. Absolutely. Our dinner. Oh, Italian American. There's no sound in Italian. 
Mm. So Italian speakers are likely to delete this sound when speaking English. Okay, so for the H, it's true that there is no H sound in standard Italian, but dialects do have it, uh, specifically in the region of Tuscany, and even more specifically in, typically in, in the Florentine accent. So um, when he says that Italian speakers are likely to delete this, it depends where you're from, because if you are, like for me, I'm from Sicily, so I don't have that sound and I had to learn it. But in, in, and it was very nice to be in London to be honest I like to underline because a lot of Cockneys don't pronounce it so I heard English people not pronouncing it so I was like oh great the H is not pronounced just like an Italian and then and then I just found out that it wasn't the case it was just some people uh, like properly spoken English it, the A should be pronounced but apart from that it's a small digression I suppose a, a tangent as always if you are from Tuscany generally speaking from Florence you will have that sound it's just that normally um, people from Florence they, it's not that they pronounce the H as an aspirated sound is that they change the C into an aspirated sound so like casa becomes hasa and uh, corta becomes horta so that happens a lot so those kind of Italian speakers they will have no problems you know, pronounce the aspiration in fact Benigni that we just heard pronounced it he's from Tuscany be happy Italian speakers may add a sound to words beginning with a vowel for example the word out may become out. Yeah, that's overcompensation um, or hypercorrectism. I think it's called hyper. Can't remember the name. I usually call it overcompensation, but yeah, it happens. Although I have to say, it doesn't only happen with Italian speakers. It happens with every person who doesn't have an, an aspirated sound in their native tongue. So it happens with French people. Shouldn't happen with Spanish. Perhaps sometimes it does, but Spanish have got the jota, so it's like the English J. The Spanish jota as the aspirated sound. So it shouldn't happen. I don't know if it depends on regional variations. I don't know that much about Spanish. But anyways, let's continue. How? This is called hypercorrection. Hypercorrection, yeah. If the citizens of them decide to go out. Yeah, 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 very true. But it usually happens with beginners, I have to say. When you have a person who's fluent, they will either completely drop the H's or learn how to place them. Uh, interestingly, this guy really struggled with citizens. <laughs> if the citizens of them decide <laughs> to go out. Pizza pie! Both Italian and English have the s and z sound. Yeah. But these sounds exist in different environments. Mm -hmm. In Italian, when a word begins with SM or SL, z. the letter S is pronounced Z. Yes. Like in these words. Smettere sleale. Very true. Smettere. Oh gosh, that's a horrible voice. Smettere. Smettere. <laughs> but when a word begins with SM or SL in English, mm -hmm. the letter S is pronounced S. Yeah. For example, small, small. and slow. Slow. And also sleep. Yeah, an Italian would say sleep, small. Very true. Italian speakers are likely to follow the rules of their native language mm. and pronounce words like small and slow with a Z sound yeah. in English. If it's a big budget movie or a small budget movie, movie or a small budget movie. You need to slowly, slowly keep staring. You need to slowly, slowly keep staring. <laughs> We're back to Naples dialect again. There's a two of Alamericani. Is, is, it's typical Naples dialect. It's not, it's not Italian. Linguists give vowels names to make it easier mm -hmm. to talk about them. The O vowel in the word notes, notes is called the goat vowel. Goat, yeah. It's a diphthong, oh. which means it moves from one vowel towards another. O. O. This vowel doesn't exist in Italian, so Italian speakers are likely to replace it with a vowel sound in their native language. Right. Usually a monophthong which oh. means just one single vowel sound. Okay, so this is partially correct, but I have to say the diphthong exists we have a lot of diphthongs in Italy. Uh, you can say muovere, direi, and o itself is actually how we, if we want to, if you get into a fight and you want to, we want to be menacing, you will say oh, 
uh, I would imagine particularly in Sicily, but in general in Italy. So O exists. It's just that, uh, as he says, we don't usually use it as a single vowel. For us, it's not a vowel, but the diphthong does exist. Anyways, it's true that oftentimes when Italians see, because we see just a single O, uh, we will pronounce it as a single. So rather than saying go, we will say go. Uh, so, so, spoken, spoken. That's very true. But I do have to underline that the fully pronounced diphthong that he's using, and of course he's is, is English and uh, he speaks RP because of course he's a teacher. But if you go up to, I don't know, Scotland, um, the diphthong, meaning the O followed by a U, O, uh, disappears. And generally, I mean, I can't really do the accent, but generally speaking, when I hear Scottish people speak, they say like, no rather than no. So uh, that kind of applies rather than to English, it applies to English English. But anyways, let's continue. And there was a moment in the film where... Uh, moment instead of moment. Moment, yeah. Don't lose. Uh, don't he said don't instead of don't. Don't lose, yeah. Don't lose. Uh. Like many non-native English speakers, Italians may not distinguish between the E vowel in fleece and the I oh, yeah. vowel in kit. Uh, yeah. So words like beat, bit, and feet, fit. Feet, fit, beat, bit. True. Um, I have to say though, they didn't take me that long to pick this one up. Also, because when I was in England, everybody was making fun of the fact that I was saying feet instead of fit. Uh, or like, it, it, I mean, the moment you say I'm Italian, if you say it with this thing and you say I'm Italian, how, which is how most Italians say, um, absolutely, immediately people will like, oh yeah, I can tell you're Italian. I'm like, how can you, I just said I'm Italian. But then you kind of realize, oh, so it's a uh, not a E. So it's like, you know, knitting, that, that sort of sound, which is not easy to pick up, but it, for me, it was easy, but probably because I was rather young. Uh, but anyways, yeah, he has a point. Absolutely very true. They get mixed up. <laughs> Unfortunately, the word sheet oh. may also get mixed up with another word. <laughs> yeah. And to get a beautiful long sheet of pasta, what you want, <laughs> if you can see your finger through the sheet... Oh, your finger you through the sheet! <laughs> Italian has five to seven vowel sounds, depending oh. on the variety. Actually, I'm impressed now. Italian has five to seven vowel sounds depending on the variety. I'm impressed because usually foreigners don't know that. Yeah, that's very true. It depends on the variety. Well, regional variety, of course. Uh, some uh, standard Italian has seven, I have to underline, but some uh, regional accents will only have five. That's very true. Whereas British English has around 20. Hmm. It's not easy speaking a foreign language when there are so many new sounds you have to make. Yeah. But it's not just about new sounds. It, true, although again, sometimes quality of vowel is even harder than the, the new vowels, uh, meaning that or vowel combinations. So actually, I have heard um, a lot of people, who, like quite some Italians who learn how to do the uh, English vowels pretty well. And I suppose perhaps I might be uh, considered one of those. Like not that I do it perfectly again, but I think I, I, think I, I, I sort of got a hang of it or how English vowels work. But on the other hand, even though we only have seven vowels, seven, since the difference in Italian is about quality uh, of vowels, so there's a difference between E and E, O and O, uh, which, which are very difficult to pick up for those who are not born with it, then I have to say I've only met like two people who are not Italians, maybe three, and could do these very well. So yeah, we've got less vowels, but they are very difficult to pick up. Or difficult. DIFFICULT! New sounds. As we found out with the S and Z, mm. there are rules about where a sound can appear in a word. And these rules are different from language to language. Oh my god, now you forgot my speech! <laughs> these are just some of the features that create an Italian accent in English. Yeah. Of course, there are many others, such mm -hmm. as rhythm and the th sounds, but I can't, th cover sounds. I can't cover everything in one video. Okay, so when he says the th sound, I know he means the dental fricative, both the voiceless, so the th of think, and the voiced, so the th of mother. Uh, or brother. Uh, I know that's what he means. And true, for most Italian speakers, uh, that's going to be difficult. In fact, uh, Italians usually change the th into a t, so think, and the into a d, so mother becomes mother, 
Very true. Many tennis do have, but I want to say, just even I know he's not going to say it, but I know that's what what he's going to say. Uh, I do have to underline two things. Thing number one, again, it depends where you're from, because if you're from Florence, again, people in Florence do have the th sound, even though in Italian, in standard Italian, you don't have it. So for me, as a person from Sicily, I do not have the th sound, and so I had to learn it from scratch. But for someone from Florence, sometimes they change the pronunciation of the T at the end of words, towards, towards the end of words, such as the T in andato, and cha they change it into a th, like andato. And that's, um, that's how they pronounce it. And even further than that, if you're from Prato, the town, a town in Tuscany, people will completely skip it and just don't pronounce the T and say prao. Bravo. So again, this was all just to say that if you're from Florence, you know how to do that sound. Absolutely no problem. And um, and the second thing I wanted to say is that the th sound, again, kind of depends where you're from in England too, because a lot of cockneys just change it to the freaking F. And they say, I think, I think. So, again, you know what I mean. But, but again, the, the, the guy's very proper. So, of course, he's taking as a frame of reference RP. We understand that. Anyways. Okay, so the video was very interesting. Uh, very well done. Very nice. The guy has a smiley face. Very nice. Very well-mannered teacher. Uh, I like him a lot. I think it's a really it's a really good channel. As I said, I subscribe. And if you, are, if you want to study English, I think the guy's really fun. Check him out. But for these uh, Italian things, being a native, I just wanted to... Friendly, give some just friendly uh, tips and advice, uh, just to friendly pieces of advice, just to say that sometimes we do have the impression, and it's, it's an illusion that we all have with languages that our language is extremely complicated and it has lots of variations. So for him, obviously a Mancunian accent and a Scouse accent, Scouser accent and a Broomy and a, I don't know, a Cockney will sound completely different, but then he thinks there is only just one kind of Italian, but that's not the case and one kind of French. But no, um, in Italy, foreign languages are as, as complex as ours. And in Italian, uh, a person from Milan, a person from Palermo, a person from Rome, Roma and Naples, Napoli, will sound com universes apart, both in terms of pronunciation and if we go into the discussion of dialects then they become mutually unintelligible this is how far-fetched the situation becomes and therefore I'd like to underline when he speaks about Italian speakers it's important to keep in mind that not every Italian sounds the same in fact if you think about the typical sort of gangsters accent of the uh, early uh, mafia people members of the mafia that moved to america uh, and all that sort of discussion of the typical uh, godfather accent like john ah your mother so that is not an italian accent that's a sicilian accent and what i mean by that is that there are still people in sicily usually it's the older generation that speak with their throat and uh, and, the, and they have that kind of attitude so ah yeah, so that's a Sicilian accent. No one in Milan speaks like that. No one in Rome speaks like that. And so when you hear that and you want to say, hey, let's examine this to understand the typical features of an Italian speaker, you have to say, no, those are the typical features of a Sicilian speaker. And even if we don't speak about the back of the this sort of uh, back of the throat kind of accent because it's from the older generation it, it, younger people don't really do that uh, anymore unless we're just joking but one thing i do have to say is that uh, the intonation is typical of sicily uh, so if i have to say the same sentence both with a standard italian intonation and a typical sicilian intonation this is what happens ieri sono andato a mare ieri sono andato a mare so in the second one, the latter, I have a typical Sicilian intonation and I'm not even using dialect. If I jump into dialect, it changes completely. So anyways, that was just to say, there is a lot more to say um, when we speak about Italian speakers, but thank you for the video. I don't know your name. I apologize. Improve your English. Great channel. I hope you enjoyed this unusual video. Usually I don't really do much languages on this channel anymore, but if you like, these sort of uh, videos let me know I might make more and I do intend on making more on uh, Patreon as well so check my Patreon out uh, you will find a link in the description below and of course a link to this video if you want to watch the whole thing thank you very much for watching and remember the Metatron has spread his wings goodbye mamma mia mamma mia